Okay, for uh, <clears throat> this video, I'm going to be trying to make a weekly change log. So, uh, one of the lads that uh, subscribes to my channel said what I should do is he just likes what I'm doing. So, he said, whenever you change a deck, upload that, tell us what you're thinking, why you made the changes you did, that sort of thing. That's what I'm going to do then. So the main changes this week are to Galadriel. I've already got the changes prepared. And I'll start by talking about what I took out. So I took out Realm Seekers. <clears throat> if you've seen any of my videos about Galadriel, I kept going on about how for six mana, it should be a nine nine. Uh, typically I play with two of the lads. So a three man pod. When I cast Realm Seekers, all of us should have three, maybe four cards in hand at uh, that point of the game. So I expect reliably 9, 9, 12, 12. In any case, without Trample and with this uh, secondary ability that at that late point of the game probably isn't going to be relevant, I decided to cut Realm Seekers directly for Galadrim Brigade. So Galadrim Brigade, three for a two-two. All my other elves get plus one, plus one, and squad. What Realm Seekers six? I get maybe a nine-nine. For seven with Galadrim Brigade, if I squad twice, I get three two-twos. They give other elves plus one, plus one, and so they would buff each other. So I would get three four-four elves that buff my entire team. And with Galadriel, I'm trying to go a bit wide. Uh, one of the directions I've decided to take. So that's that sorted. Inscription of Abundance. Right, so five. It, it, face it, it costs five. Uh, you're not going to want to cast it without paying the kicker unless it's some kind of emergency. You've got to get one of your creatures in there to fight another creature. So for five, put two plus one plus encounters to target creature, gain X life or X to the greatest power among the creatures you have, or, and, and, not or, and target creature crawl fights target creature, so you get to kill one of their creatures. Okay, it's, it's pretty good in this deck. The thing is, there's a lot of pretty good cards in the deck, and one of the things the deck doesn't have a lot of is artifact and enchantment destruction. It's got Reclamation Sage and Beast for Beast Within. Other than that, there's not a whole lot to do with the uh, artifacts and enchantments. So I'm taking out Inscription of Abundance for Shower of Arrows. Not only does it destroy an artifact enchantment or a creature with flying, so I can still kill a creature, it's just restricted to flyers, it scries, which is one of the main uh, themes of the deck. So it feeds into what I want to do. So at instant speed, I can blow something up and scry and get whatever scry triggers I have on the battlefield. For that reason, Shower of Arrows is going into the deck. Sylvan Offering. I'm taking, I just don't want to do it. I don't want to give my opponent um, a bunch of blockers or a bunch of attackers. It is cool that I get a bunch, but I just don't uh, feel like helping out the people that are trying to kill me. For that reason, Sylvan Offering is coming out, and I'm replacing it pretty much, not quite one from Press the Enemy. The other thing I wanted in the deck is more counter spells. This isn't a counter spell per se. It's basically Vencer uh, Shaper Savant with... Um, an extra ability that so I lose the 2 2 body that Vincer represents, but I get to cast an instant or sorcery spell with equal lesser mana from my hand of the pagan's mana cost. Um, another reason that I want to press the enemy is a friend of mine has an Eldrazi deck and he's got this. I forget what it's called, something Eldrazi. Not Enter the Eldrazi, that's what I want to call it, but that's not what it's called. It costs something like 12 mana, and he gets to blow some things up, draw, I think, four cards, and take another turn. 
it's it's a heavy heavy swing so if I press the enemy and I press him then that goes back to his hand and I can cast something that costs let 12 or less from my hand, whatever I have probably won't be as impressive as the spell I'm putting back in his hand and I'm still going to have to deal with that spell next turn but maybe the uh, the one turn is all I need or the other guy that's playing with us maybe it's all he needs to deal with it I also decided to get the uh, silver foil so if none of you have seen this this is the silver foil I'm not sure how well you're picking it up on the camera that I have a lot of glare from the lighting Anyway, the uh, art itself doesn't seem, uh, that's a lot of glare, the art itself doesn't seem to be foiled. It's more like the uh, Mystic Archive um, etched cards where the trim, all the blue trim is foiled. And it's kind of washed out, which is uh, an interesting look. Let's see if I can get it back in the sleeve. Something else, another... Uh, commenter asks is why I use unsleeved cards to push my cards back into the sleeves and this is why you saw I was trying to get that uh, press the enemy down in there it wasn't going but there we go now it's in last change to Gladriel it traveled through uh, Caradras Okay, it's got the voting, which is the uh, uh, something I kind of want to do with the deck. I like it. A friend of mine hates it. In fact, he just says random. And when the voting comes, he just picks up a die and he says, okay, one, two, or three, this choice, four, five, six, that choice, and he just rolls the die and goes with it. <laughs> Unless it's something like draw a card. And then if it benefits him directly and he can see it, then he'll vote. If he doesn't care and doesn't want to do it, he'll just randomly do it. The reason I'm taking this out is so I'm going to get in a uh, three-man game probably two basic lands and one card from my graveyard. My opponents are going to look at my graveyard and if there's anything in there they don't want me to have back, they're going to vote for me to take a basic land because this is going to be late game anyway so they won't care. I'm the one that would be voting for returning a card in my hand, most likely. That's why I would be casting it. So for six mana, sorcery speed, later in the game, I get basically two rampant growths and a regrowth. It doesn't seem like it's that great an option when I've got other cards that uh, can return things to my graveyard. <clears throat> For example, the uh, Mirkwood Elk. When it comes into play and when it attacks, I can return an elf to my hand and gain life equal to, I believe, its toughness. So, for travel through Karadras, I'm putting in Galadrim Bow. Um, as I said before, the deck is kind of weak to flyers, and I'm hoping this can short up. Two mana, one, two colorless, one green, a uh, flashy artifact, so I can keep it in my hand as a uh, surprise, as a combat trick. When it enters the battlefield, just attach it to a creature I control and, and uh, tap that creature. So let's say I've gone with uh, my typical strategy of buffing uh, Gladriel, making her huge through the uh, voting triggers. The um, <laughs> Anyway, so let's have attacked with her and she's a uh, 6-7. They attack with a flyer. I've got no flyers. There's minimal flying in the deck. Bang. Slap this down. Untap Galadriel. And instead of a 6-7, she'll be a 7-9. And it can block that flyer. 7-9 uh, isn't too hard to imagine. Uh, even in the first six or so turns. And it should be able to block pretty much anything that attacks me. So that's coming in for Travel Through Card Address. The other cards I bought that I couldn't 
see taking anything out for. I really want an Essence Warden. I really want to put her in the deck. But there's nothing obvious that she is better than right now with the way I've got it constructed. After I play a few more times, maybe I'll revisit the decision and find something that justifies the replacement. But as it is, I don't see anything. Same with Bombadil Song. The idea behind uh, buying a Bombadil Song was to be a combat trick. So if somebody's going to Swords, um, Beacon of Destruction, um, Murder, anything that would kill a creature that I want to keep, then I can give it Hexproof and, uh, and stop that. Plus the ring will tempt me. There's not a whole lot of things in the deck that trigger the temptation of the ring. Anyway, as with Essence Warden, there's nothing I saw that immediately justified its inclusion, and I gave it a lot of thought. But I'm going to uh, keep it on hand in case it does become relevant. So that's it for Galadriel. Um, at this point, what I'm going to do is cut this off, and I'm going to start a second video with the other changes I made to some other decks. So I'll see you then.